We're going to be recording this because we had a lot of people that did register that are not able to make this time because I think the world is finally opening up, which means some people might be going back to in person. So we are doing, you're here today for puppy power, which is basically all of the foundation behaviors and how to elevate them into a level where you can take them into the real world. So if you have an unvaccinated puppy, you'll be working in your home. If you've got a dog that has all their vaccinations, you're gonna take this information, practice it right in front of us because it's interactive, but then the rest of the week, we wanna see you take it into the real world. Okay. All right, Anita, do me a favor. Can you take a look at the chat? You're gonna be hosting the chat. So if anyone drops a question, this is live. So that means you can ask questions along the way. We're going to stop what we're doing. We're going to answer those questions. And Sandy, do me a big favor and just let people in if they're coming in late. Cool? Give me a thumbs up if that's cool. Okay, great. Now, every single week, this is eight-week class. Every single week, it's got a different theme. Meaning when it comes to socialization, it doesn't just stop when your puppy's 12 weeks old. You want to continue exposing them to specific items that your dog is going to have to experience later on. So if you guys remember a few weeks ago, I took uh, Diane and Benji over to Las Vegas. He had never really seen the life of, a, of Las Vegas. He's an adolescent teenage dog. And there was a lot of things that he had never experienced before. Those kind of experiences at a distance is going to really help serve you so that you can continue the training with your dogs. They do go through cycles, which we're going to go through in just a second. So your instructors today is myself. I'm the owner of Canine Learning Academy. I am also a certified dog trainer with Karen Fryer Academy, and I specialize in puppies. So I've got a specialty in what we call puppy start right, which is through Karen Fryer. Curtis, if you can just give me a wave because you're right next to me and you're going to blow their ears off if you unmute. Curtis is my oldest son, and he runs our all day school with the Canine Learning Academy. And then Anita, go ahead and unmute yourself. And tell us where you're from. Hi, guys. I'm from the UK, down Bournemouth, down from the south. And I'm very excited to be here. Awesome. And Anita was helping with our, we had a class with tricks over the last three or four weeks of last month. And man, her dog's got some amazing tricks. And Sandy, unmute yourself and tell us where you're from. Hi everyone, I'm Sandy and I'm from the UK as well. I'm in London. Beautiful. And I'm really excited. And Sandy works mostly with one to one clients. And, and there we go. All right, Brianna is in the room. Obviously, we can now see her. She's upside down, but that's okay. All right, so let's go over the rules. The rules are class is live. You can ask questions along your way. That's totally fine. You can also, if you need to ask a question, you can type it in the chat or you can simply just say, hey, I have a question. Anita, you're going to be looking for those hands up. We may ask you to volunteer. There's sometimes when we have technical breakdowns where our videos don't work. So we may ask you to just give us a demonstration. Don't be shy, this all helps all of us. And if you've got your video turned off for whatever reason, that is totally fine for us because there's a lot of people that have registered for this class that are going to have to watch it later, including Sinatra who's getting neutered today. So give him a lot of prayers getting neutered today. Um, here's the format. We're going to talk for about three or four minutes. We all know that puppies have no patience. So it's three or four minutes of talking, and then you're going to be asked to work with your dog in front of us, in which one coach is going to come out and give you some one-to-one -one coaching. Again, this is recorded. Now, this is part of a up an eight-week course that is a video vault. If you have had trouble registering or don't know what that is, contact us immediately 
after the class and we're going to show you how you can access all of these amazing videos all right so let's get started again this class is suitable for puppies 8 to 20 weeks but if you are older like achoa that is totally fine you're just here to practice what you've already learned the class is every week for eight consecutive weeks every theme every week has a different theme and again, you've got access to all the tiny tutorial videos so that you can share them with everyone in the family and that you guys are all on board. We also have, are you listening? One week of handouts that you're going to get today that's all of your handouts so that you can make a mini book or journal for your pup and you can put them together with your notes. So let's go over what we're going to learn. Uh, you've got a nerd out session. We're going to talk about a field trip that you're going to really focus in on, a socialization um, and positive exposure experiment that you're going to work on. We're going to also tell you how to prevent, but also if you've got an older dog, you're going to go into problem solving. We're going to have one enrichment theme per week, and we're going to go again over all of the basics. is included in the opportunity that you created. Um, All right, everybody, mute yourselves. in specific step-by-step -step instructions here in the concert protocol. All right, Let, help me out, guys, who is not muted. Especially for um, contracts that are being signed, that everything's in the law. Oh, you guys muted me. What's up? Okay. I'm back. Themes for class. So today's theme is children and teens. Anyone have kids in the home? Raise your hand. Yeah. So, you know, typically puppies and children don't mix very well. And the reason is, is that kids have a mind of their own and what they want is usually what they can see. We really want to keep puppies and kids separated at first until both parties are trained. Puppies have very, very sharp teeth. So when I say separated, I mean just some kind of barrier that would prevent the puppy from biting any child that's in the home, as well as your over enthusiastic teenager that smells like sweat coming into the house with a lot of players or a lot of their entire team, you're going to want to keep them separated to the puppies got an acclimation of what that might feel like and what that might look like. Cool with that. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. So the theme all week long, what I want to see in your puppy um, community is pictures and videos of you acclimating your puppy to different types of themes that have to do with kids playgrounds, the sound of children crying, the sight of a soccer team playing at a distance. But keep an eye on your dog and make sure that they're low, they're staying below threshold, meaning that they're not getting stressed out. Today, you're going to need something soft to work with your dog. You're going to need an Amazon box or any kind of box. If you don't have one today, just know sometime this week, the enrichment project has to do with a box. Make sure your dog has water, harness and leash if you want to keep them contained in your area, and then make sure that we can see you. So Anita and Sandy and Curtis, can you see everyone that's participating with puppy? Just go scroll through there and make sure you can see. If you've got a clicker, you're going to want to bring that. And if you've got kids and other dogs, you're going to want to make sure that they're put away for now so that your puppy can really focus. I think Brianna has a... Brianna has a chubby belly bean, jelly bean right behind her. All right, so here is your one nerd out thing and then we're gonna get started. So developmental stages. You might think, oh, all I have to do is get through this socialization stage and then man, my dog is just gonna be amazing. Well, guess what? Just like children, they all go through stages. They're gonna go really, really good and then things are gonna go south for a second and then you're gonna come back up. So. The stage that we're gonna focus in on today, these are the eight basic stages. You've got your prenatal, your neonatal, your transitional. This is sometimes where a dog is when they first, when you first talk to your breeder or your rescue and they're like, you've picked your puppy out and now you're still talking to them. The transitional stage is where we like to contact the breeder and say, can you please add a crate? 
can you please do these things? These are the time that we can add those kind of things. Socialization stages are normally our puppies that are gonna be from 12 to 16 weeks when you've just brought them home. And then a Choa, how old is a Choa now? He is uh, seven and a half months, so. All right, so he is full in over, um, he's passed, we've passed juvenile, he's going into his sexual maturity. Has he been neutered? Uh, yes, he has. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that gives you some information. Those of you that are working with one-to-one -one clients, if the dog is neutered, they're gonna have less chemicals in their body than they would have if a dog wasn't neutered, right? So you wanna make sure you're asking those questions, especially when a pet parent goes, my dog isn't listening. My dog is doing all these things. This is typically when we see the dog that goes really strong and not listening as much as they did when they, were, when they just first came home. So when you first bring your puppy home, it's that socialization stage. They're just like, they're shocked really. They just came from leaving their entire litter. They're in a brand new home. They're in your house and they're just like, oh, what's going on? And they're following you like crazy, right? Remember that stage? They're getting adapted to the new life. So that socialization stage changes every couple of days. You're gonna notice something really different. Um, you really want to make sure that you're patient with your puppy, that you're you're understanding that um, not over, not giving them too much too soon, letting them take all of that information in at their own pace. But if you dream about taking your dog out in the real world and going camping, you're going to want to expose them during this stage. This is the stage up to 12 to 14 weeks where the dog makes the decision that this world is safe or everything is dangerous. Now, right here, I have today a board and train puppy that is scared of everything. It took me 45 minutes to finally wrap a lasso around the dog's neck to even bring the dog with me. The family had left for a week I have Julie who's in the hospital and I had to go pick up that dog. Now this dog, my husband goes, you're bringing a dog home that's got a bite history. I go, yes. Meanwhile, I've got two little innocent 12 year old puppies that are just, you know, like, oh, play with me. Well, this dog is scared of everything. I didn't have a phone, but if I had a phone, I wish I would have recorded it because what you would have seen is this dog's tail tucked the entire time I was there. And I was given cheese, turkey. And the reason for this was the dog had not been outside during quarantine. That's an entire year. Never outside. Never saw another person. And stuck with the family. And now that both, the entire family had their vaccines, you know what they did? They took off on spring break on vacation. Meanwhile, this puppy was scared to death. So... I was able to get the puppy and within that 45 minutes, I was able to change the dog's mind about how he felt about me and we've become best friends, but he is still scared of everything and everyone. So that is not the kind of dog that you're going to be able to have a good time taking everywhere with you. It's always going to be a lot of work and it's a lot of work to change the dog's mind. Now it only took 45 minutes for me to, to make friends, but I have a 50-50 chance of getting bit every time I put the leash on this dog. And I don't want that for you guys. I don't want that for any pet parent. And most likely, if a pet family wasn't going to spend the money on training, this is the time of, type of dog that would end up in the shelter. And this is the type of dog that would be euthanized because no one would be able to handle the dog. All right. So socialization stage three to 12 weeks is highly important and it's ongoing. Every emotional state of that dog needs to go along the entire time so that you can have a dog that can adapt to everything. That being said, let's get started. So the first one that we're gonna work on today is called the name game. All I want you to do is say your dog's name, wait, and once the dog's eyes look up at you, you are going to mark it. That could be a clicker. That could be yes. That could be good job. And then I want you to pop 
food out of your hand and offer the food to your dog's mouth. Then I want you to, um, I want you guys to, I want you to just take that treat, put it to their mouth one time. I want you to do it again, but the second time, I want you to take that food, put it to the mouth, and then I want you to set it on the floor. And then I want you to say your dog's name again while they're looking at the floor, while they're finishing up their food so that we can get that really sharp eye contact. I wanna see your dog's head just jerk every time they hear their name. So I'm gonna stop screen sharing. And can I get somebody assist me with a clock? Let's see, uh, Curtis, you can grab your phone, do stopwatch. We're gonna do this for two minute warm up. So say your dog's name, mark with a yes or a click, Offer the first treat to your dog's mouth. Second time through, you're going to put that treat on the floor and you're going to stand up and you're going to repeat. So we are just getting the dog's name. I'm going to coach you through this. I'm going to spotlight two minutes on the timer. You got it, Curtis? And go. You're on. Let's see it, Lauren and Justin and Brianna. And it. All right, Justin, would you mind? Um, yep, I can see you fine. Good. Lauren, go ahead and put that food on the ground and I want you to stand up. Perfect. Now stand up while he's eating, say his name. And Justin, just to make things a little more challenge for you, you're going to toss the treat. And while he goes out and look, gets his treat, once he finds it, I want you to say his name. Yes. Heather, you're going to need to put that camera down. And Brianna, you're going to put that camera down because I can't see you guys' dog. Curtis, what's the time? So dog's name, perfect. Good eye contact. The moment their head even turns towards you, you're gonna be marking that. Great click, Brianna. I love that timing. Good, Lauren, you're gonna present the treat right by the paws. Let's get your dog's head to turn a little bit more. Got 15 seconds. We're gonna extend this for another half a minute. Great job. Justin, you're gonna to toss the treat to reset your dog. Toss the treat. Now say his name. Perfect. <laughs> and time. Now we've got a lot to do today, so don't it's okay if you just got a few repetitions in. Good, give me a thumbs up if you're okay. Cool. So just to recap, when you say your dog's name, all it means is for their eyes to come near your face. Then you can ask them to do something else. You can say, bandit, come, which means, Dog is not looking at you. You say their name, they look at you. And then all of a sudden you tell them to come over to you. All right. You don't want to use your dog's name if they're already looking at you guys. All right, moving on. My favorite. In order for your dog to listen to you in any kind of way, there needs to be a connection. You can't expect to walk up to a dog you've never met before and ask him to give you a paw, do all these things, especially a puppy that's young. So when you have a dog that doesn't listen to everyone, it's because they don't have a connection yet. So building the bond is going to be the number one thing you do when you first get your dog, as well as making sure that they feel safe. Now, some of you have that bond and I already know, but let's go into human play. 
Now, take a look at this video. You've got Adam here working with his eight-week-old Boston. He is on the floor acting dog-like. And I want you to think about being sexier than anything your dog could ever encounter. Sexier than the puppy down the street. Sexier than the bird that like stops over on your balcony. You have to be so engaging and so fun that your dog would rather pay attention to you than anything else. Now, this is not suitable for dogs that bite, right? But this is suitable for most young puppies. Let's start with no toys. Make sure that you realize there's no rules. Whatever they give you, that's fine. Now, if it gets to be too much, just stand up. We're going to take a look at the body language and we're going to talk about this. All right. So we're, if we're going to do this for just two minutes. Everyone on the floor. And Curtis, you've got the clock. Two minutes on the clock and we're on. Good. So we see. Beautiful. So think of what, how do dogs move? They do their little play bow, they roll around. Nice job, Lauren. That's good, Justin. I love that. Okay. Avoid using any kind of cues. It's more of what do dogs do instead of what they say. Play, play like a dog. Nice. Oh, very, very good. I love how you are moving side to side. Good refrain. Lauren, you've got some really baggy pants on, so I would go back down to your knees because you don't want to teach your dog to jump on you, right? <laughs> Good, just one more minute, keep moving. I know it's a lot of cardio. Now I love Brianna is using a little bit of petting, no food on this one, just all engagement without food. Cause you want your dog to want to play with you. You know what, when a dog comes over and plays with your dog, they never have food. Beautiful. All right, Brianna, let go and shift. Get that wheel play going. Heather, great job. time. 20 seconds. And time. You want to give them the all done cue? Good. How'd that feel? Great. Good, good, good. So does anyone have a dog that is a little bitey? Raise your hand. Okay. So most goldens are a little bitey. Labs can be really bitey. Now, if you're getting a dog that's starting to use your mouth, it's for you to acknowledge, okay, that's how my dog plays. And then it's for you to outthink your dog. What can you do instead? You go, well, probably going to have to engage with toys. Now, if you are... None of us are seniors except me. I'm probably one of the oldest, but if you've got a client or someone that is a senior that's working with a puppy, they're going to have thinner skin. Therefore, they're not going to do this as long as someone that's got, that's a little bit younger. They can tolerate a little bit. So when it comes to teaching your dog how to use their teeth in their mouth, if you're young enough, if you're okay with it, you can teach them what their dog, what your dog can tolerate, what they can do and what they can't do. Okay, more than someone else. If you start with toys, the dog really can't sense that. So if you can tolerate one or two weeks of this, you're going to teach your dog, oh, that's too much. Oh, that's acceptable. I like that. Ooh, by simply not saying a word, but by body language. When you play more, they go, wow, this is cool. Now, mind you guys, this is two or three minutes. This is exactly what play and training should look like. Short and sweet. 
because here's what's going to happen. So Justin's got a dog that's going into that, you know, going to an adolescent and adult. They go over threshold quite a bit. They go over the limit. When we see dog pot fights, it's typically two adolescent dogs. This, so this is Curtis. He's my oldest son right here, right? And I can tell you a million stories of horrible fights that him and his younger brother got into. And it started with the like a slapping little game. And it turned on to a full on closet holes in the wall kind of fight. Right. And that, you know what age that was? That teenage stage. <laughs> so note to self. Right. <laughs> All right. So moving on to lure or targeting to get sit on cue. So I want you guys to think about what is sit useful for. So as an adolescent adult dogs, when someone says, oh, my dog keeps jumping. Oh, my dog's jumping on my friend that comes over. Oh, my dog won't wait at the door. What you can teach your dog instead is sit. So being able to say sit, no matter what kind of distraction is going to be important. Now, does everyone raise your hand if your dog has sit on cue? Meaning you say the one word or you cue with the hand. Okay, perfect. So in this video, I am cueing this dog to sit by simply lifting my hand, which used to have a treat and the dog is doing it. The moment the butt touches the ground, I'm marking it. There's that yes. So here it is. Yes. Now I'm handing the dog a treat to the mouth. Now here's what I do next. Pay attention is I'm releasing the dog. I'm letting the dog know you're all done sitting and I'm tossing a treat. So I would like you to go into sit. Yes, treat. And then let the dog know that they are done by saying something like, okay. And then I want you to just toss the treat to reset your dog. Now, Justin, for advance, what I'd like you to do is actually walk around. I want you to walk around and then ask for your dog to sit no matter where they're at at the room. You're gonna mark it. You're gonna walk over to your dog, give them a treat, and then let them know that he's done and you're gonna reset and do it again. We're gonna do this for about two and a half minutes. All right. So it's sit instead of jumping for two and a half minutes and Begin. Oh my gosh, Lauren, you have been practicing, girl. Now, what I liked is she did not move a thing. Her entire body was super still. Good. Love it, release, remember to say your release word, letting your dog know that they're done. Beautiful, Justin. So he's doing a release. So just walk and cue it from anywhere in the room because you've got distance already. Beautiful, sit. If you're on the floor, Lauren, I want you to go ahead and stand up because if you've got friends coming over, there's no way you're going to drop down and sit on your butt when they come over. You're going to be standing up. So as quick as you can, you want to get to a standing position. Good. Love it. Good, good, good. Great toss there. So it's walk away. Remember to release your dog. Only say your dog's name if he's not looking at you. If they're looking, just say the word sit or cue the hand signal, whatever that signal is. 20 seconds. So you're going to do about eight to 10 reps. Now, a really good pet parent is going to be paying attention to their dog. Beautiful, Lauren. I love this. Good job. Good. All right. That is awesome. Give them some loving. Give them some loving. Tell them all done. All done. Good job. <laughs>
Good. So even though it feels still super simple, it's something you're gonna to wanna to practice for a long time because right now you're in the home. Now, what do you do after you go, you've got your, your dogs got it in the house? You're gonna do it in your front and backyard or your deck. That's the next stage. Then after that, you might go in the neighborhood and go for a little walk and then you're gonna ask your dog to sit there. And then you're gonna go over to the park and then finally you're gonna go into a busy city. But you can't go from your home, which is super quiet and safe, and then ask your dog to sit at a dog park with about 100 dogs walking by. That's not going to happen that fast. But if you practice this all the time and your dog loves it because it's got some kind of reinforcement history, they're going to do it. And they're going to love doing it for you. And you're not going to have to always use food. But while you're practicing today, you've got your dog's meal and you might as well practice with food. And then you're going to fade that out. All right, so we're going to skip the safe place because we kind of already did that. But basically what the rest of this week, I want you to think about whatever it is your dog wants. I want you to pause for a second and see if they offer you this sit. So if you've got a dog in an X-Pen, some of you've got young puppies, they're in an X-Pen. Walk over to the X-Pen and stand there and wait for a sit. When the dog sits, you can then pick them up. If you've got your dog's food bowl, you're gonna lift up that food bowl and you're just gonna wait for that sit. So you're gonna capture it. You're not gonna cue it. You're gonna let your dog think for a moment. I want you to wait up to two minutes and see if your dog will offer that sit. So give me a thumbs up if you got it. Perfect. All right, capture the sit. All right, going into the next one, everyone have a harness or leash on your dog. So Curtis, can you take a look at that? Does everyone have a harness and leash in class? Uh, I don't see the other guy, but from what I see from Lauren, she does. I don't see Heather's guy. Okay. All right, in this next one, you're gonna take off your dog's harness. And what I want you to do is make sure that the sight of their harness is something that they're okay with. So I want you to pick up the harness. If they come over and sniff it, I want you to pull the harness away and I want you to offer your dog a treat. The goal is, is that by presenting the harness, your dog walks over to you. That ideally is the goal, right? Your dog goes, oh, yes. To do that, you're going to have to make sure that positive experiences with that harness. You're going to need to present some treats. Um, give them some loving, whatever it is that they love while you're putting on the harness. So, and then once they have the harness on, which all of you guys have already done, if you've got that harness on, is that they're able to play and move around with it, right? So this dog is playing all kinds of games with the harness on. So let me just rewind this just for a quick second. Is anyone having any struggles with putting on a harness? So Anita, if you can look out for any hands, I think we're good. It's gonna show you this tutorial because as you guys, dogs get a little older, the harness is going to change. So you typically are gonna put your hand with food over or through where the neckline is. Dog commits to the food, then the harness moves, not the hand. The hand with food stays still while the harness hand moves, guys. Then you can place some food on the floor to finish doing up all the snaps. Now, this sometimes takes two reps. If you do this really well and you're consistent about it, your dog is going to absolutely love having a harness on. And Anita and both Sandy and Anita can share with you horror stories of dogs that are scared to put on their harness. So let's just do this for a quick two minutes just to make sure your dog is okay with their harness. So take off your harnesses and two minutes on the clock. What's wrong, Heather? Go ahead and unmute.
Uh, Junior is asleep. Oh, okay. So you're not going to wake him up. You're going to be a good pet parent and you're going to just be okay with him being asleep. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's in the corner. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead and bring him back? To All right, everyone else, two minutes on the clock and go. Do you want me to bring the computer as is? Yes, please. Okay. Oh, that's where the camera I love that. Yeah, this is a lot of work for puppies. So let's see. Good. So put, adjust and put the harness up higher. Yep. Just put the harness up higher like it's part of your sleeve. Even higher. Your harness goes up by your bicep. Turn off the audio. I love you laughing at your Heather, turn off the audio. Oh, perfect, Lauren. Nice, Justin. Nice, Brianna. It's all right, Justin. Take your time. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see him kind of, you know, now in another environment with the harness because when we go on walks now, he'll follow me to the side of the house and just walks right into it because he knows it equals we're going on a walk. And here at, inside the house, I haven't done it in a while. And he's like, what's going on? <laughs> so that's okay if your dog sees the harness and goes over to the spot where you normally put it on. That's typically what I would train if I was in your home. So that's fine. Yeah. And, and ideally, yeah, that's fine. Walk over to him and just make sure he's not afraid of the harness. I want you to put the harness down on the ground. Just put it on the ground and put a food over it. I want to see if he'll eat near the harness. If your dog is showing any kind of fear of the harness, because it is a contraction of some kind, right? You're going to want to put it on the ground, just like Justin. And you're going to place food on it. Lauren, you're done. So just give your dog some love. And Brianna, you're done. Yeah, that's good. All right, and I'm gonna spotlight you guys. Just take a second to take a look at what Justin's doing. Let me get uh, and see. Do you see what's the body language that Acho is showing? Backing up. Look at the tail is down. His head is down. He is fearful of that harness. This is what fear looks like. So toss, so he, Justin, <laughs> you were, <laughs> be nice. So <laughs> he did drop a treat halfway between the lead, the harness and Achoa's wish is, is moving away. So what I would say is a couple of things is get a higher reinforcement. Is he willing to work with chicken? Maybe not today. Oh, here he comes. So here he's coming. So don't look, he's coming. So with your, now he's right at the harness. So slowly turn your body and you can see what he's doing. Yep. There we go. So that's good. That only took 20, 30 seconds. So hand movement along with a harness is scary. So you're gonna take it down a notch, spend some time right here, and then you can gradually go back up. Beautiful. So guys, this is really important lesson. If there's nothing else that you learned today, it's right here. This is really good. It's take steps back with puppies so that you can take leaps forward. Well done, all right. Thank you, Justin. Anita, how are we doing on time? Give me a thumbs up. Are we okay on time? I'm assuming. Yes, perfect. Okay, good. All right, enrichment. So having your dog learn how to eat from multiple different things and different sounds is going to be really important for the real world. So you're going to start this inside the house when your dog is feeling comfortable, whatever room that is. 
So today and all week long, you're gonna be working with a box. It can be any box and boxes of all sizes. It can be boxes within boxes, but anything to do with the box. You're gonna take your box, place two or three treats inside. You're gonna leave the flaps open and very easy for your dog to go into. Now, earlier this year when we ran this, people were doing forts out of boxes and they were taking the box and making tunnels. We just want the side of a box to be something your dog's not scared about. In fact, they go, oh, mom, what'd you bring home from Amazon? Or what'd you get Is those new shoes? Instead of, oh, there's a box I'm running. So Curtis can remember we had a dog, a golden retriever, scared of boxes. Literally, if the Amazon came and put boxes, the dog wouldn't even go in the room and cried and cried and cried. Wouldn't even go outside. It was really scary. That dog is now on medication, doing a lot better, but it was very scary for that dog. So what I'm going to do now is have Curtis put on the YouTube channel of children crying while you work on anything to do with the box. Now, if you don't have a box, what I want you to do is what we call get. Brianna, will you do me a big favor and demonstrate a quick get, yes. which perfect, which is treat to the nose and toss the treat and get your dog actually moving. So it's get. get. And she tosses it down low like she's throwing a rock. Beautiful. Yes. All right, so two minutes enrichment project with a box or get. Just two minutes here. And go. Lauren, Justin. You'll have to hear. Oh, give me another. Okay, we'll play it. Play it loud. Good. Oh, it's on your computer. Never mind. Guys, great job. Look, yes, the dog is going into the box. So in our advanced training, the dog actually walks into the box and sits down on cue. So we want to make sure the dog is not afraid of that box. Good. Justin, do you have a box? No. Okay. Do you have get? Let's just toss some treat over by the counter. Get. And toss. Good. Just 30 seconds. Perfect. Keep tossing treats into the box, making sure that they're okay. Good. So that backing up, Lauren, he's a little scared. Yep, touch it to the side because those little flaps are scary. Okay, go ahead and turn it off. And start to, very good. And time. So Lauren, all week long, all kinds of boxes. There's a little bit of fear going on over there. Yep. And then eventually you put box within a box. You can also put a box on top of a pillow. You can have a pillow on top of a box. You can start to stack it up. But all week long, every single chance you can, you're going to be playing the sound of kids screaming, crying, laughing while you do enrichment with the box. Give me a thumbs up if you got it. Justin, you got it? Okay, cool. <laughs> Good. All right, moving on. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about body language. I want you to pay attention because if you're going to do some play dates, 
you're going to want to understand what's going on. So here we have lots of different dogs playing. And I want you to just kind of observe and we're going to, I'm going to mute. I'm going to pause this as we go. So Winnie over here is the boxer. Darla is the Boston right here, the black and white dog. Winnie has a lot of confidence. How do I know that? It's because she's constantly the person that's going first. Where Darla goes, oh shit, right? She's got that, oh my gosh. She backs up, her head goes back, her ears go back. So ears back, whale eyes is the, oh my gosh. And weight forward, ears floppy is the, huh, let's go play. I want you to keep in mind, if the puppies are the same age, we're going to let play happen a little bit longer. But when you're dealing with an adolescent dog and you've got a young puppy, you're going to probably step in a much sooner. So this is just reading some body language. What we're going to talk about in this short session is stress signals. All right. Oops. So did you guys notice the dog on the left? We did what's called a shake off. The dog had experienced some stress and then said, oh, let me just regulate. Stress signal is that little shake off. It's for you to go, oh, oh, well, there was something that just went on. That I might've missed. My dog is self-regulating. That is a good thing. Play, right? Typically a dog that is what we would call happy, meaning body is floppy, ears are floppy. They've got no flexing of muscle. Everything's just uh, kind of loosey goosey. We would call that kind of a happy dog. The dog is content. Now, mouth open with relaxed mouth is okay, but sometimes we see a relaxed, we see a mouth open, but there's like muscles in the face and that's a little different. This is what we want to see in most of our puppies. It's going to help them build confidence. It's going to help them feel like they're safe. Now, pinning. Most puppies play with their litter mates by pinning one another down and then they'll switch. Good play is when they're taking turns. Now, if you have the dog that's on top, typically you want to count to about five seconds and that should be about the maximum number of time seconds that that dog is being pinned or being pinned down. And I'll go over how to get them apart in just a second. So these are all siblings here. These are three puppies that are all sisters. These are not siblings here. So we're gonna keep a different kind of eye on them. So there's a lot of going back and forth and that's the kind of what we wanna see is back and forth. These puppies are all the same age. They're just different breeds. Same right here. These Aussies boxers and Boston Terrier are all the same age. So here we got is a dog that is avoiding. This is what we call like almost the whale eyes. And look at this, the expression on this dog's face. There's muscles that are flexing, right? That is what you want to see. Um, that's something that you want to notice if your dog is under a little bit of stress. It doesn't mean you need to step in right away. It's just observe this information and gather this information and you might need to step in. So dog backing up, dog backing up, dog scratching right there when you know they don't have fleas. Or maybe they just put on a collar or harness. That might be a reason. But if the dog is scratching after they saw a sight of another dog, that is a stress signal. Again, just information. Dog backing up, tail down, tail tucked. Avoiding, right? This dog has got whale eyes and avoiding because the boxer over here is being just a little bit too enthusiastic. Avoiding, just observation, guys. You really want to see a nice, um, head to tail interaction, kind of a circle. 
And what Curtis is doing right here with this boxer is he's giving him a little bit of a time, giving her a little bit of a timeout, approximately 10 seconds. So what he did is he came over with puppies, guys, not adolescent dogs, treat to the nose, and he's bringing the dog over to a spot, giving her a little bit of food and holding her for about 10 to 15 seconds to give her a little break. Now, this dog has been trained that holding on to the harness is a positive exposure. And we're going to do that over the next eight weeks is holding on to the harness and collar is okay. But if you get an adolescent dog, especially one that you don't know, or an adult dog, you typically don't want to hold the dog away, right? They might retract and what? <laughs> so then the dog got another chance, another opportunity. When it comes to puppy play, about three two minute interactions is good enough, guys. It's not 20 minutes. It's not 30 minutes. It's just two or three minutes at a time because they've got, um, they, they don't have, they're still growing. They don't need a lot of time. They just need to have some interaction. There's the lip lick. There's that tail that's flagged. There's those whiskers that are moving. These are all stress signals with the dog. Dog that's constantly alert. Like if you guys see Brianna, she's got a dog back there. There's a dog showing teeth. This does not mean move forward. The dog that I picked up last night that I told you about, the one that's here with me right now, that look was the look he was giving me. He was staring at me sideways and he was curling up his lip. I did not go forward. That literally means back up. If you go forward, the dog has no other choice but to either shut down or bite. And once a dog learns to bite as a puppy, it's something that they will always learn. All right, please listen, okay? But one to two sessions a week of puppy play is more than enough. Even if you just want your dog to be okay with other dogs, the sight of other dogs at a distance is really fine. If you want to have a dog that constantly sees a dog and goes, oh my God, can you play? Can you come over and play? Then you're going to want to set up puppy play dates. But if you want a dog that goes out with you and ignores other dogs, you're not going to be scheduling a lot of play dates. You got it? Okay. So it has changed quite a bit. Before it was like, expose your dog to a bunch of other dogs. That is not if you want your dog to be okay and ignore other dogs. That's if you want your dog to be super social butterfly and constantly wanting to play. I don't know about you, but for me, when I walk a dog, I want my dog to walk with me, not go out and hang out with everyone else in the neighborhood. Cool. Cool. Okay, let's move on. We're almost done. You guys are doing good. How are the dogs doing? Okay, most of them should be tired. So we're winding down. If your dog is unvaccinated, you still go out in the real world. Now, when your vet says your dog's not vaccinated, don't take them out to dog parks. They're not saying don't take your dog out, period. What they're saying is don't expose your dog to the ground where there might be Jardia, kennel cough, or parvo. So use wagons, use shopping carts, carry your puppy, go on a car ride. So this week's field trip is all about the neighborhood. Now, if you've got a dog that's done the neighborhood before, you're going to go to a new neighborhood, but you want to expose your dog to different neighborhoods. So this is Sunset Beach here. We've got a lot going on over here in Sunset. We've got Dogs that walk by, surfers, wind things, kayaks, like everything that you can possibly imagine. Go out anywhere from five to 20 minutes. Take a look at your dog's body language. Make sure that they observe at a distance. So this is the first time that this dog, Darla, saw a bike go by, totally froze and would not even take food when it got too close. Fire, um, fire truck went by, other dogs go by, expose them to a park where there's children playing or go by a school where they can smell what dogs look like. So at a distance, there's the fire truck going by. So he's going out of his way for five to 20 minutes to make a big effort to say, hey, look, Darla, 
check out this cool thing going by. They don't have to touch it. They don't have to feel it. They just have to observe it for the first time. And there can be nothing negative that happens. Now, if there is a negative experience, just let us know. We're going to help you talk you through that. Here's your list. This is all you got to do by 12 weeks old. Just kidding. You want to do the most that you can on exposing your dog to everything that you're going to be putting your dog through later in life. And it's constant. So people with canes, people with scarves, think of what does your world look like? So Justin's got kids. They might go camping. They might go on a little road trip. They might experience other people. They might have a party at their house with a bounce house. Those are the things that you try to create. We've had some amazing clients that have gone through everything that you could possibly imagine, including bowling, airport, If that is what you're going to put your dog's life through, then you want to make sure you try to expose them in that socialization list in that time frame of eight to 12 weeks. If you're beyond that, you still go through it because you want your dog to go, oh, we're doing something new. No problem. I've done this before. So the more repetitions you do, the better. So here is your practice work. We don't call it homework because usually people have a negative effect with homework. It's practice work. I want you to focus on sit, which is the say please for everything. When you're picking your dog up, when you're giving food, when you're about to walk outside, when you're putting on the harness, everything's got to do with the sit this week. And then the name game, toss something or even hide another room and call your dog's name and see if the, the, the name has a positive experience with them. You saying their name, practice your behaviors about one to three minutes at a time. Every day, try to evolve, try to interact with a cardboard box in any way. And I want to see some cool stuff and you're going to be dropping pictures and videos into your community page. And that's your Facebook community. Every day it's about human play and hand feeding this week. Cause I want to start by seeing that connection. So I want to see you hand feed and I want you to interact with some kind of play with your dog. You don't have to bring toys in yet. Next week, Think of bringing an entire bag of husbandry, which is grooming equipment, a blow dryer, all of the clippers, anything to do with the brush. We're going to be exposing your dog to all of the grooming supplies that your dog might need later on, including the sound. So you're going to be going to the Facebook group of the Power Puppy community, and that's where you're going to be posting your videos to get some feedback. Anita and Sandy are going to be responding as well as myself and Julie when she gets back. Um, Anything to do with your own dog. If your dog has a social media Instagram, please tag us because we will be able to put that in the, um, put that in their little video a little bit later. So tag us if your dog has one. Okay. So that was it for class. Oh my gosh. It is exactly one o'clock. Oh, wow. We did amazing. (laughs) That's that's never done before, but I want to give you guys a few minutes. If you have any questions, otherwise, those of you, the puppy should be resting and need some water and stuff like that. But if you need to leave, thank you very much. Class is going to be exactly next week with a different theme, totally different exercises. And remember that you've got your entire video vault to go by. So if you go, I don't remember those videos, they're all in your tutorial video um, library. So you're going to go through orientation and week one. And next week is week two. So you'll be watching all of those as well. Any questions? Unmute yourself. Okay, Lauren, that was fun. Good. Justin, how did Ochoa do? Uh, he did. He did well. Thank you. And it was a good, excellent review for, for us. It's a good yeah. reminder of like reinforcing the, 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 the everything. So it was yeah. good for us. Good, good, good. And Justin, I recommend, you know, even having the kids, if you can't participate, I love just have one of the kids do it too. This is great. If you've got kids working with your puppies, this is going to give them some, a good amount of time. It's, it goes, you know, pretty easy. It's not a lot to ask for. 
and it's going to help build that relationship. All right, Suzanne, thank you for jumping in. And um, I will let you guys all go. If you'd like to, does Suzanne and Justin and Lauren, do you have access to your video vault? Yes. Yes. Just, yes. Justin? That's, is that the through uh, Teachable or a different? Uh... Through Teachable and you have puppy power and we're getting ready to rebuild the adolescent one. Got it. I, I do. Thank you. Okay. All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Give your puppy some love. Thank you very much. And we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>